The following is a presentation of Stewed Productions. All right, everybody, welcome to a very special edition of Liquid Lunch on a Thursday in March. The first Thursday, we're in March. Are we? We are. We're in March. You don't say. We are. Oh, wow. I do say. Cool. Uh, it's pretty wild. Hold on, let me, let me uh, maximize my boom. Picture that most people can't see. Yeah. Because it's washed out. But whatever. Anyway. Hey, uh, my name is Josh, everybody, and this is Liquid Lunch, Texas is Live Midday Craft Beer Show. And uh, we're live. Woo. Here we go. All right. Yeah. Uh, joining us yeah. today, all the way from the fair city of Austin, Pam Cato. Boom, right there from the uh, craftbeeraustin.com world headquarters. I don't know. Is that, <laughs> is that where we're at? <laughs> Uh, joining us today to talk about, as you saw, our ooh, look at our, our logo is nice and pink today to celebrate the uh, Pink Boots Society and the big uh, collaboration brew day up in Austin. But enough about me talking about it. Pam, what do we need to know about this big upcoming event? So it's actually a series of events. And uh, I'll talk really quick just about Pink Boots Society in general and who they are. So it is a society of women designed to uh, uh, aspire and uh, encourage women through education. So all the funds that are raised, um, it's a nonprofit obviously, so all the funds that are raised goes towards scholarships, learning uh, for the Pink Boots members. And that could be anything from getting your Cicerone certification to going all the way to YCH for their three day uh, workshops that they have to getting um, uh, going to Germany and doing a tour of various breweries, meeting some of the um, Travis uh, brewers out there. So it's just a wide variety uh, designed again to just encourage women in beer. So what we do, what we're doing this year, we do it, uh, doing it for several years now. First time we did it in Austin that I participated was 2016. I think they did it a year before that though. Um, where I was a member, but they, uh, it is a collaboration group day. And the way it works is uh, Yakima Chief Hops has created a pink boots group blend. They do have some of them uh, spot for spot by, but it was a pre-order blend. So when breweries get that blend, then what they do is the collaboration happens between the members of Pink Boots Society and that particular brewery. And so we will go to that brewery and be with them and the brewery gets to decide what kind of beer. Some of these they get the members involved too. Like we choose um, what hops do we want to pair with the blend, what hops do we want to put with the oil. So it's kind of a collaboration between the Pink Boots members and that brewery to decide what kind of a beer they're going to make. Um, and so this year the blend has got Azaka, um, El Dorado, Idaho Gem, and Laurel. So a lot of people are using it kind of in a dry hop capacity in their beers. But we actually have 21 breweries in Austin that bought the hot blend and are doing some collaboration brew day. And on, on Sunday, which is actually official women's day, there will be three collaboration brews going on and then one release party where they brew their beer back in circle brewing brew their beer back in February Sunday. And, uh, St. Elmo also brewed their beer in February. They're having a release party on Friday. Okay. Well, that's cool. That, uh, yeah, it's always, 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 always fun to try new beers. And, uh, this, the scope that I was reading this morning, the scope of what, uh, Yakima chief hops and what are the, uh, what's the, uh, the malt, the malt house. There's a, um, anyway, yes. yes. Uh, yes. I think they said, was it last year? They over a hundred thousand dollars to education. Yes. Over a hundred thousand dollars. It's the largest fundraiser we have because three dollars of every uh, pound of hops sold goes towards Pink Boots Society's education programs. Yeah, and that, like you were saying, that could be anywhere from you know. There's a lot of different um, you know uh, certification programs, and you know most people in the beer world know about you know Siebel and, and places like that. But yeah, getting that uh, Cicerone certification and, and for all levels in all parts of the uh, craft beer uh, industry. Um, there was, there was an interesting story. I'll, I'll share it on our, uh, Twitter, maybe on Facebook, I don't know about the, uh, Yingling, uh, the daughters of, of, uh, of the founder or not the founder. It's, I guess he lived, the founder was back in like 1890 or something like that. He's uh, almost as old as Kennedy. Huh. Huh. 
<laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah. uh, but no, the daughters of, um, uh, let's see, what, what is the, the guy that's running it now? Um, Mr. Yingling? Mr. Yingling, yes. Yeah. Anyway, his daughters are basically running it now. It's four daughters, Jennifer, Wendy, Debbie, and Cheryl. Uh, and anyway, they're, they're doing a lot. Oh, uh, Dick Yingling, Richard. He's, that's who's doing it. That's, he's the, he was the one on Beer Wars. Oh. He, you remember what, Beer was, Wars? Yeah, was he the dick? R yes. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Sorry, Pam. Anyway. <laughs> they're, do they're doing... <sighs> There's an interesting article I'll post. It's a good story. I don't know where I was going with that. But anyway, um, back here in Texas... Did I, just, uh, did I just ruin it? No, you didn't ruin anything. No, no more than normal. But anyway, it's, um, it's an exciting time. When, you know... Here in uh, the Houston area, we've been doing uh, uh, what's the clever? It's um, it's totally escaped me. I'm pulling a, a Joe Biden right now. Uh, the, you know the thing, uh, Daisy Chain. The Daisy Chain. Yeah, yeah. all the brewery collaboration, uh, and that, which has always been really really cool. Also, you get this, you know, the, the yeast here for the Daisy Chain, right? And then all around Houston, breweries are doing their new thing, are doing their own thing with it. Same thing with this, uh, are in the same school of of uh, approach with the uh, pink boots uh, hop uh, hop selection. So um, anyway, it's cool to see. You said 21, right? Yes, 21 that I know of. And there may be a couple. I just found out, uh, just so happens, a pink boots member was over at, uh, at one of the breweries the other day. was talking to the brewer and found out they bought the hops and they're planning to do a brew day. So they keep coming up. So, so far, as far as I know, we have 21 planned uh, collaboration brew days. Okay. And some of them won't brew until uh, some of them have them planned in April, and then they'll release their beer a little later. And then some are planned in May, even in the summer, and that's fine because just buying the blends itself donates funds to Pink Boots. And then it, it's actually a little bit better for the membership if you kind of have the brew days spread out because yep. the people can attend. And um, then craftbeerAustin.com which is my blog, will um, obviously all the events that are out there, we publish that like crazy. We want to make sure that we really get a lot of people out there. So the two big events that are on the books right now is first Vista Brewing, which is a beautiful property. If you haven't been there, it's out in Driftwood. Um, uh, Karen has very graciously invited all of the Pink Boots brew, uh, anyone that has their beer ready on by May 2nd, out to the brewery for a tasting event. Which is great because we can just get the general public kind of coming in and trying the beer and just getting samples. And then for anyone that gets label approval, which everybody won't do that because some people are doing it on their pilot systems. But if they do go get label approval, then Easy Tiger at the Link location is going to be hosting a Mother's Day takeover, which is really fun. Okay. And then we can set up, you know, a booth and donation to kind of educate people on what Pink Food Society is and they get to buy the beer. Yes, that's that's exciting. Um, one of the breweries involved uh, is is Cellus. I've got the list in front of me, and it, it's already what? How many minutes? We're almost ten minutes into this show, Kennedy, and we haven't even well one. One, you haven't introduced me. I haven't yet. introduced you. I apologize, yeah. uh, everybody. Um, we've um, well when 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 Pam is on, you spend time talking to Pam. But uh, Pam, well, let's take a moment real quick for everybody. To give a little bit of attention to the guy pushing all the buttons uh, to my left, it'll be your screen right or dead center, I guess, whenever he takes his own camera. But anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Kennedy. Hey, how's it going? I'm Kennedy. So this exhibition of drinking prowess, look at that. You've gotten better. The chug. The chug. And that's that's a successful chug, Kennedy. Congratulations. How do you feel? Um, Salus <laughs> White's an easy chugging beer. I'm going to say that. Why is your mic so low? You need to get I don't know. Oh, there you go. Like, uh, do I need to like really eat my mic? You do. No. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, I got a nice, with a nice lemony aftertaste. Mm -hmm. It's quite delightful. If you guys are going to chug a beer. <laughs> you recommend Salus White? I recommend Salus White. Okay. Well, sell us one of the many, uh, many uh, breweries on the list here. Uh, let's see. Circle Brewing, as we mentioned, St. Elmo, Vista, Independence, uh -huh. Infamous, Live Oak, um, Fourth Tap, Brutorium, Pine House 2 location. Actually, let's see. Pine House, 
Pine Rock Madness Madness, three locations. Three locations. Yeah. yeah, the Round Rock location now open, and I uh, went in there not that long ago. I have family in Round Rock, and uh, it's spectacular. I'm just going to say, you need to go. And if you're in uh, if you're in the Round Rock area, then you can just slide on over to uh, Blue Bonnet Beer Company. They're in Round Rock as well. There you go, Kennedy. Thank you. I've been to the Round Rock location myself. Have you? Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. Um, so, uh, Pam, uh, tell us a little bit more about, like, we're very Houston-centric because we live in Houston. Kind of happens that way. Uh, Austin, we, you know, we get to go up to Austin. That's the cool thing about Texas. It's, you know, it's from my house, a little over two hours away uh, from all of Houston, depending on where you are. It's anywhere from two to, I don't know, what, four and a half, depending on the time of day you leave. <laughs> It could be, but, uh, the Austin, the Austin beer scene, since you, uh, cover the Austin beer scene so thoroughly, um, I mean, we hear a lot about it. There's a lot of great beers up there, but, uh, one, you know what? We didn't even talk about this. Sorry. We just jumped right into your beer, Kennedy. How rude of us. Yeah. One more thing that everybody wants to know what we're on this show. Yeah. Let's check our watches. Yeah. Uh, what time is it? It's time for your favorite segment and mine here on Liquid Lunch. This is what you drinking. Good, 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 good. So there you go, Pam. One, what are you drinking? And two, uh, yeah. let's see. I'm what? having a beautiful Zilker ESB mm. right now. It's yeah. quite delicious. I love the ESB style. A lot of people don't make it these days, which is a shame because it's a nice, uh, easy drinking, flavorful beer. Yes, I love ESBs. Yes, that is one of my girlfriend's favorite styles as well. Well, there you go. It's, I think it should be most people's one of theirs. It's like it's so bready and like comforting. Yes. Yeah, fantastic. Um, oh, one of the pre-show beers we had, and I still have a little in my glass. Um, a little shout out to not a Texas beer, but uh, do we have a you have a can in front or someone yeah. one to show? This uh, from uh, Brooklyn. This is one that just came out and just got into the Houston area. It's been, I think, in the Austin area since February is what they said. Uh, but Special Effects, it's a non-alcoholic beer. I've tried a few non-alcoholic craft brewers uh, approaches to non-alcoholic beer. And philosophically, I was a little bit uh, hesitant on this whole thing, Pam. But uh, it actually, it's a pretty tasty beer, especially if, you know, if, if, you're, if you're trying not to get lit, but you're trying to go Lent, eh? I don't know. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> it might be one to yeah, go for. Actually, one of my feature writers, uh, Ryan Trivet, who writes for us, he writes just different features for CraftBeerRossi.com, just did an entire article about the wild world of non-alcoholic beers. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Mitch. Well, it's, um, <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know. Um, it, it's an interesting, uh, like, disciplined approach. To a beer, it's like you can't have any alcohol in it. Now let's see what you can do with flavor. And yeah. this one, this one's pretty tasty. It's, I would put it in like that, um, like a session IPA kind of area. Uh, athletic Brewing out in California, they do not the exclusive uh, non-alcoholic yeah. beers, I believe. I don't yes, know. They're from the South by Southwest, actually. Oh, are they? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I don't know of anybody in Texas that has attempted one, but that doesn't mean that there's not one. Um, hey, can you want to close those doors? I'm just, can you, we'll talk while you just get up and close the doors. I'm sorry. We should have done this before. It's just the, it's just the dogs running around and the things happening. Sorry, Pam. Look behind the, look behind the curtain. Anyway, uh, special effects, uh, pretty tasty, but uh, my actual, uh, show beer, uh, it is uh, rodeo season here in, uh, Houston. And uh, the livestock show and rodeo is now. Is it in full swing, Kennedy? Do we know? We had the yes. Okay, so the, we're in... the cook off was uh, Friday night. Okay. So yeah, and well, and we had all the uh, wagon trains and everything come in through. Oh, that's always fun, right? So anyway, uh, back pew in Porter, which is nice. Yeah, north of uh, north of Houston. If you're looking at a map, Houston looks like a target, and so uh, 45 straight up, go to uh, 99, and then take a right. And then Porter's right there. Then take an exit, two exits down, and then you're basically at Back Pew there in Porter, uh, in an old church, Pam. But uh, anyway, Bobby and the and the crew out there they did mutton busting, which is where you always see those kids riding the, the sheep, which is always adorable. Anyway, it's a dry hop wheat ale. Oh, made, that sounds good. Yeah, made specifically for the rodeo. So, 
uh, like Austin, like that's the coolest thing about Texas. Well, not the coolest thing, but one of the cool things about Texas, each one of our, uh, our cities have their own thing, right? So Houston has the rodeo. You just mentioned South by Southwest. You got Fiesta over in, in San Antonio. I don't know what Dallas, I don't know. What does Dallas do? I mean, do, it's, just Dallas. it's just Dallas. <laughs> I, don't I guess we'll count. Da Dallas does Dallas stuff. We'll just count them. Do we count them as Texas still? They're still in the club, right? Well, they got some good breweries out there, so I well, think you have to. Yeah. Okay, they do. And, That's fine. and we're having a Dallas brewery on next week, so. Okay, fine. So uh, we love Dallas. We do love Dallas. We well, love Dallas. Dallas beers for sure. Yeah. It, it's sorry. It's a. I'll, I've said it before. Houston has a bit of a. It's a one-sided rivalry. Kind it of is. Thing. It's it's completely one-sided. Yeah. We think there's a rival rivalry. Say that word again. Rivalry. <laughs> Easier said than done, apparently. Yeah. Anyway, so mutton busting. And then you had the uh, Salus White there. Uh, Kenny, that's what we're drinking currently. Yeah. So all that. All that. And I think I just played that way yeah. too aggressively. Yeah, Salus, when they brew their beer, they're going to brew their beer in April. And then for the Pete Food Society Collaboration Brew Day. And then they have a really cool event in May called Girls Rock. Mm -hmm. And they have some like girl rock bands. They get vendors. They do all sorts of really cool stuff. They'll be doing that in May featuring their PBS beer. Okay. Well, that's cool. That is very cool. It's, um, let's see, who else did I, is there anybody I didn't mention? Oh, yeah, Jester King, uh, Central District, Red Horn. Red Horn's one of those places where, again, that's out not far from Round Rock, that I, the coffee and the beer and the whole, all that. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody knows like places like Jester King or Salas, right? Those are death, but yeah. Anyway, sorry. Black Star, Holdout, uh, Middleton. Yeah. Okay. I think that's everybody, at least on my list. Mm -hmm. But then it's growing. It's growing, yeah. To add to that is Patch Beer and Kalachis. They just announced that they're going to do a brew day as well. And I'm really excited about that one because they got some, they have some interesting things going on over there where they got the clean side of their brew house, mm -hmm. but then they got what they call the bug room, <laughs> which is where they're going to barrel age and do some funky stuff with their beer. They're already doing it, and they've got beer on tap there. So I'm really interested to see what they're going to come up with for their uh, Pete Boots beer. That's yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, somebody coming to a lot of people travel to Austin for all kinds of things, right? But um, for somebody coming up for a day trip or a weekend trip from from Houston or down from Dallas or whatever, um, what would be your pro tip recommendation as far as you know? I don't know, a brewery uh, maybe mussies or beer mussies that maybe not everybody's heard about. You know, kind of that. Well, so luckily, craftbeeraustin.com has an entire map texas breweries and they're listing in their hours which is really cool and then uh, we also have the brew tour listings and um uh, bottle shops if you're interested well now we have beer to go but if you wanted to also go to a bottle shop we get that listen to and we also rewrite about weekly events so uh, I, I give that advice to people a lot when they're coming in for the weekend check out our events listing because we do a pretty good job of getting everybody's parties up on the list uh, this weekend for example Eastside cool party is happening and that is 10 breweries on the east side mm. they all brewed a beer for this party the per, part of the proceeds will go to a charity that they choose each year and you just kind of go from zilker to lazarus to uh, pops and grain to blue owl i mean it's it's a big it's gonna be really really fun i'm definitely doing it this weekend so that i mean it just kind of depends on what you want to do yeah um i say in terms of uh, you know, must-see breweries. I mean, there's a couple of pretty big heavy hitters in Austin that people know about. I think you can just look at your GBF uh, medal winners to kind of figure out who they are. Um, but there really is, I mean, pretty much you're going to have a good a good time no matter where you go in town. We've got a really good set of breweries here. Yeah, Austin has the advantage of uh, things are closer together. I'm just doing from a Houstonian perspective versus yeah. we have pockets, yeah. which is cool. And we're getting more well, pockets. I'm actually from Houston, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Right. Yeah, and the pockets are growing. Yeah, the po it's like we've, we're the, you could call Houston the cargo short city because our pockets are getting bigger. <laughs> Maybe the parachute pants, we got because yeah. we got multiple pockets, or do we have bigger pockets? No one's ever called Houston the, the cargo, cargo short, pants. Cargo pants or cargo, cargo shorts? Cargo shorts. shorts. It's Whatever. too humid to be pants. Yeah. Cargo we got to go short shorts. City. Cargo short city. Yeah. I think that's our new name. Mm -hmm. Point it there. Anyway, big pockets. I don't think it's going to catch on. It's cargo. Pam, what's your opinion of cargo shorts? Uh, not a fan. Okay. You can put all your stuff in them, though. I know. Yeah, that is, that is the benefit. Is, uh, if, if and when my husband does wear them, mm -hmm. he carries my stuff. Yes. That's it. For like a, like a 
a festival or a beer festival or something like that, breathable cargo shorts, way to go. Yeah, and I don't understand, like, late 90s, early 2000s, Mm -hmm. cargo shorts were cool. Yeah. And now... So are we. Yeah. What happened? And now you can't wear... If you wear cargo shorts, people will make fun of you. But I'm like, they're comfortable. Mm -hmm. They're super convenient. Yep. Kind of like socks with your... Style now where they've still got big pockets, but they're just flat, not puffy. So you can try those. Is it the puffy nature of it? I, I, yeah. Hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. I don't know. It's like uh, well, you had the fanny pack, which is very uh, utilitarian, right? It, it, it serves a great. Oh, that's, that's back. Fanny pack's it? back. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's a big festival item. Fanny packs. The fanny packs are back? It's fest. You see all sorts of fanny packs. Ooh, do they have uh, do they have fanny packs that are insulated to carry like extra beers? I'm sure they do, right? That is a very good idea. We should get together and invent that. So. Uh, we should like a like a bandolier or a like holsters of I don't ooh we could have like a bottle opener or like a like I don't know all that. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. It would be cool, and if it's mm-hmm. cold enough, like it's a freezer pack kind of thing, kind of keeps your midsection cool. Mm-hmm. Mm. There's all kinds of okay. Anyway, all right. Don't talk too much. Yeah, Apparently I we got work to do. I think we should invent uh, like a Camelback that is made for beer. So, w- but something that will make it not go flat. Yeah, that's when you just got to drink faster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Maybe just like strap a keg on your back. And I don't know. It might be a little heavy, but so that's a lot of work. <laughs> Actually, do the B. Those, those things are heavy. Yeah, they are. All right. Um. Okay, so questions. Pam, questions. Uh, craftbeeraustin.com. How did it, when did it start? How long has it been around? Uh, I, I look at it weekly, at least, all the time. <laughs> uh, it's fantastic website. Like, if you're in Austin, if you're going to Austin, or if you're an Austin beer fan of any shape or form or, you know, whatever, it's the website. So when did it get started and, and you know, all that kind of background stuff? So I don't know the exact year, 2007, I think it was, but uh, Rich and Irina uh, has started the website, and then um, they brought me on as a writer back in 2015, and I immediately said, hey, can I write about women in beer? And they were like, absolutely. So I did a three-part series on that, and then my co-writer, Andrew Schwab, which a lot of people in Texas know Andrew, uh, he's very much a beer guru, Mm -hmm. Uh, we got together and started doing brewery profiles. So we would go to breweries in town, talk about who they are, uh, what kind of beer do they have, what's their brew house look like. So there's a little bit of a technical aspect for kind of more beer nerds. But then at the end, we would put in the article uh, their hours, if they have food, is it kid-friendly, Wi-Fi, that type of stuff, so that people could use it as kind of a directory, if you will. Um, And then uh, this year in January, my husband and I decided to buy the website for Rich Arena, and that's how it came about. That's cool. It. It really, it's a, it's a needed thing. The, the, from somebody who's tried to cover, you know, at least Houston, I, I've been doing interbrews for over eight years now. And when I started, it's like, okay, I hope I have enough people to talk to. Cause there's, there's five breweries. And now just in Houston, mm-hmm. there are over 50 in the Houston area. There's over 50, maybe six. I don't know. Austin has even more. And now on this show, you try to talk about, you know, cover the entire state because it's, it's so worth talking about and you need, you, you know, we need these types of things like these targeted. Yeah. We could have a a new brewery every single week and we will never get to the end of them. Yeah. It's a good problem to have. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What the one cool thing I like about uh, craft beer Austin is, you know, you got all your beer events right there in one place. Something that Houston is desperately lacking. Mm. Like, like you know, we're sitting around like, what are we going to do this weekend? And so I'm trying like, well, what's going on in the beer world? So I'm at, like on Facebook and I had to find every single brewery individually. And it's just, it's just a huge pain yeah. in the ass. And if somebody wants, if somebody want, here in Houston has listened to me and wants to do something good. Well, there, there are, we, we should, we should get a, we, we should get a website. But in Austin, you guys are taken care of. You're spoiled. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll start craft beer Houston. <laughs> it's listen. There's uh, there's people that have tried it that kind of do it. it. It's a it's a lot of work, and so that's one thing I want to absolutely tip. Find a hat, put it on, and then tip it right there to you, Pam. It's um it is a lot of work, and it is a job. I mean, as much as we, you know, talking about beer and being around beer, and you know, you kind of give that. It's a fun, 
you know, party kind of vibe. But there's, you know, just like working at a brewery is not drinking beers all day. It's 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 a yeah. lot of hard work, and it shows that you guys are putting in the hard work, diligent work. Yeah, we've got a really good team, and um, which is great. I mean, if we didn't have the team we have, then it would all fall on one person, and that it would fall apart, quite honestly. And then we're trying to recruit new people to come be feature writers. So I don't know if you're familiar with the Beer Museum, mm-hmm. but um, uh, Matt and Jim Benavides run the Beer Museum. It's a Beer Museum pop-up. And uh, so we brought John, uh, we brought Jen on as a feature writer, and she's doing historical beer style articles, and she's funny as all get out, and she's interesting and smart, and people love her, and so uh, those are going over really well. And of course, we want her to promote the beer museum as much as possible, and hopefully bring those two things together so people get more exposure to what she's doing, and then of course it helps us because we're providing something interesting to our readers. Mm, yes. Absolutely. Um, I don't get up to Austin. Austin's one of those places where I'm like, I want to be up there more often. Yeah. You know, it's, it's really is one of those things. It's like, I'm, I'm close. But. Last time I went to Austin, I got the privilege of, of riding around in those, uh, in the scooters. <laughs> oh, yeah. What are you, uh, Pam, what I, are your thoughts on I, the scooters? I, I can't believe there's not more yeah. accidents with those scooters. Like there's got to every day there somebody has to get hit by a car. The other day we were downtown and it's rush hour traffic downtown. We're trying to go to some event and there's a guy in a scooter like literally right in the middle of the road. I'm like you are going to die <laughs> at some point. Yeah, who was it? There's somebody on. Uh, they were just on uh, Joe Rogan's podcast ranting about the uh, the scooters. He's from mm-hmm. Austin. I don't remember the name. I should have looked before I brought it up. Just, That's crack hosting you, right you, there. You can't turn any street corner and not like run into scooters just laying around. <laughs> it's yeah. yeah. I don't know. I they, mean, they were pretty fun to ride, but I can see living in Austin, how those things would be just a big old pain in the ass. Yeah. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, it can't all be positive. You have all these new breweries, mm-hmm. but then you have scooter gangs, mm-hmm. you know, that come in and <laughs> all that. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, you gotta be careful with those gangs. <laughs> I saw I saw some lady um, cruising around on a scooter in high heels. That's, nice, that's, that's oh, pretty yeah. awesome. It's bold. Yeah, it was bold. It's very bold. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Pam, is there? I don't know. What else do we need to discuss before uh, we let you go? I want to have you back on a regular basis if if we can t- tempt you to do it to let us know all about the goings ons in Austin, but. I mean, cause Austin is, it really is the central location for all of the, uh, you know, the Texas craft beer scene, uh, the Texas craft brewers guild festival up there each year. And, um, you know, it's just a good central location for people to meet, um, a lot of, you know, craft beer industry as well. So, um, anything else, you know, we need to tell our audience, uh, before we let you go about your day covering well, the only other quick plug. I also am the Southwest Regional Editor for PorchDrinking.com, mm-hmm. and Porch Drinking is run by Tristan Tan out, Chan out of Denver, and it is a national blog. I have like 100 writers, and I'm really fortunate. I have another, there's another writer in Austin, uh, Katie Koch, that writes for them as well, and we're really fortunate to get to do it because Texas beer does not get coverage on a national level. Yeah. So we try to bring that to Porch Drinking, and they've been, they're so... Um, collaborative and open to it. It's just been fantastic. So they'll be here for CBC and there'll be a lot of activities going on for CBC as well as all the produce releases. So both porch drinking and craft beer house will be covering kind of two different scopes, but we want to really want to get the word out on Texas. Yes. Yeah. Well, the fact that it is in uh, the uh, CBC is here, craft brewers conference in San Antonio this year, uh, that'll shed a lot of light there. And I'm so excited. It, it will. It's yeah, going to be great. That's going to be rowdy in April. Uh, so everybody watch out for that. And then, uh, you know, when you, over the spring and summer, well, you know, if you live in Texas, you're going to be going to Austin at some point. So, uh, craftbeeraustin.com is your source for all that information. And, uh, Pam is your go-to gal and uh, pink boot society. Watch for all those events. That's a really exciting time. Bunch of new beers, bunch of great brewers, bunch of, you know, just great events all for good causes and education and just good, all the feels. So, um, Pam, Thank you for uh, shedding some light on that and being here with us today. And uh, we look forward to having you on again real soon. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to doing uh, some more 
different ideas and things with you guys. It sounds it's gonna be great. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah, go Texas. Woo! Yeah. All right, go yeah. Austin. Go Houston. Go everybody. Woo! All right, thank you, Pam. Thanks, Pam. Thank you. All right, Pam Cato, everybody. This is where I need one of those um, applause sound effects. That's what I need. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Where's my cursor? There it is. I found it. All right. Pam, if you can hear, huh? we'll, we'll hang it up now. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right, there she is. All right, cool. Oh, that was the wrong channel. Boom. There we go. And that was Pam Cato, everybody. That's Pink cool. Boot Society. Pull the, uh, so, pull that thing back up. Which thing? The other thing. Or, or you might want to hang up yours. I don't know if she knows her camera's still on that we can see. Well, <laughs> <laughs> she, yeah, maybe hang up yours. Can you hang up your sign? She said I wanted to get awkward. She has a beer fridge behind that door that you're looking at. Does she? Yeah, but don't. Don't. Don't do that. I don't know. I can hang it up. There. <laughs> uh, yeah. All, All right. right. There we go. There. Yes. She's no longer around. Right. That's the thing we need to... We're not as good. But anyway, everybody check that out. Sunday, March 8th, uh, International uh, Women's Day. And Kennedy, you're a big fan of the International Women. I right. don't know what that means, but I yeah. Mean, yeah. Well, like your yeah. mom yeah. is in Spain right now. Uh -huh. She's an international woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, right? You're a fan. Yeah. And then Jules. Jules not here today because she's traveling. I don't know if it's not, international. Not, no, she's in Texas. But she's been international at uh, some points, well, right? Yeah. We went you went we, internationally with her, with a yes. woman. Yeah. I don't know if that's exactly what everybody means by that, but mm -hmm. right? Mm hmm Okay. See? Brought the material I'm, There's today. a lot of Kennedy fans internationally, women fans. Are there? Well, I mean your mom. No, I'm not talking about my mom. Who are you talking about? I'm talking about all the ladies. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> anyway, have we seen any, is any, uh, anybody watching today? Have we turned everybody off with the creepiness that you just? But uh, we didn't share like so. We share every day. So you know, I, I should point this out. Mm -hmm. We went and talked about uh, international collaboration. <laughs> what was it called again? International the, Women's Day. What are you talking about? The the Pink, Pink Boots, Boots collaboration. collaboration Brew Day. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about what's going on in Austin. Yes. There is. There are plans in Houston. Are there? There are. Please, 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 please. So Pink Boots Society here are going to be brewing a beer at St. Arnold mm -hmm. called the Pink Caddy. There you go. It's the IPA brew with Pink Boots hot blend. You got to talk into your mic, bro. So, I mean, I'm literally like right in my well, mic. Then, yeah, yeah, I know. That's where you need, you need to be. You need better equipment. This is the design. These are, these are, so you sound beefy. Okay. You just got to know your equipment. I look beefy. You do. Yeah. Anyway. So, Pink Boot Society, Houston. Here we go. Be on the lookout for Pink Caddy. Please do. Yep. Pink, Pink Caddy. So that, that one's at St. Arnold. Yeah. Um, I just talked to Priscilla this morning. Mm -hmm. So, they've got, uh, actually, uh, St. Arnold got some new beers coming out as well. Have you seen that? Headliner. They're Blondale, and they have a juicy IPA coming out. Headliner and the Blondale? No, there's a Blondale called Headliner. Yes. And you mean that beer that was on our in the beer future? Yeah. But did Not you too see? Long ago? Yeah. Did you see? Have you seen the cans and stuff? All the posts? I haven't seen the posts, but I'm familiar with the can. Okay. And did you see the juicy IPA? Did no. you see that can? No, I didn't. Okay. Well, boom. There you go. Two new beers from mm -hmm. St. Arnold. There you go. Mm -hmm. And, what? Hey, wasn't there another? There's another rodeo beer, right, from Back Pew? I saw it's got I think, stampede in the name, stomping stampede or in a red can. Yeah, it's in a red can. Okay, I saw it. Yeah, but I grabbed mutton busting because who doesn't love kids on sheep? Yeah. Little kids riding sheep with a helmet, and then they fall off and cry. Do you ever watch the rodeo? Oh, hey, Jill, Jules. Hey, Jules. Hey, baby. How's it going? She's in Lubbock right now. Is she loving it in Lubbock? I, I, who wouldn't be? I don't know. I don't know. Um, hey, Jules. Uh, if you're in Lubbock, what was the brewery that I was at in Lubbock? When were you in Lubbock? Uh, last year. Why were you in Lubbock? Why wouldn't you be in Lubbock? True. I was getting my guns up, bro. No, it was out there for, I was there for a gymnastics competition. Oh, I okay. do gymnastics. Yeah. You're a lot more limber than you look. No, I'm not actually. That is one thing that I'm not more limber than I look. I'm exactly as limber as I look, which is not very much. Um, no, we, yeah, there's some good breweries out there. Which way did she go out? She said, oh, she's traveling around, right? Yeah. She was also in Amarillo, but I, I don't think she was there long enough. Hmm. She I, went Bronx Stomper. Bronx Stomper is the name I of the beer? I was completely wrong. That's the back pew beer? When I said Stampede. Who said that? Who let you know that? I know. Who let you I know? I know. That? Give credit where credit is due. Philip. Thank you, Philip. Um, 
We, let's talk about this mutton busting. Uh-huh. Can we talk about it for a second? Oh, she's she's at the airport. She's coming home soon. In Lubbock, Lubbock has an airport. Yeah. So who who uh, who winds up the plane? <laughs> no, but she she actually flew into Amarillo, and I've made that flight before. And they don't have a um, when you get there. There's no yeah. the tunnel thing that comes out to the plane. Mm-hmm. There's Tarmac? not there's, there's not one of those. Yeah, you, you have walk to, you, out there. You have to like walk down the stairs. Yeah. The, the, the stairs on the back of the pickup truck. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. They, they have one of those. So as soon as that door opens and you walk out yeah. onto the stairs, mm-hmm. you catch the biggest waft of cow shit. Yeah. It is just. It's what it is. It's that yeah. and cotton. Yeah. Out in L- Lubbock has a lot of cotton. I don't know if you knew that or not. Uh, Do they? Yeah, a lot of cotton. And they, there's feedlots all over the place. Yeah. And like I actually guess, right now. I'm trying to think when harvest season is for it looks like snow. It looks like the whole place is covered in snow when it's ready. It's quite amazing, actually. Hey, Mary. Hey. Looks like Mary just joined. Hey, Mary. You missed you missed all the pink boots talk. Oh, she can always rewind back or That's catch the true. replay on YouTube mm-hmm. uh, or uh, Twitter. Yeah, or all those places, all those places that we are. Or when she's playing video games later. Um, Mary's a big, uh, big video game player. I don't know is she? No. Although, can I say this, uh, are, Mary? Are you are you telling lies about Mary? I'm not. Uh, but let me tell you this. I wanted to say uh, um, I have been well entertained by Jake and all the videos that they've been putting out uh, on Thistle's Facebook page. It's hilarious. You should check them out if you've not I seen I saw them. one about, and granted, I didn't have the sound, but I just need to go back and watch these, and I'm sorry. Yeah. But Jake was fishing. Yeah. Right, right next to the mm-hmm. in the pond next to the, the thistle. Yeah, yeah, all that. Yeah. So and there was uh, what was the one the one before that <laughs> where um, anyway you have to go back and watch them. It's really funny. They're funny videos. I don't know. I guess you fuel it enough with enough uh, beers from Thistle Draft Shop, and then I don't know maybe like a a, a, a bacon grilled <laughs> cheese that gets your uh, creative juices flowing. But anyway, yep. um, oh, guess who else just popped on I, who <laughs> a former co-host who of the show okay who perry producer perry no i'm kidding oh one Catherine. Catherine? yes the Catherine. one soon to be wed Catherine contreras soon the, to be whatever her new last name will be i guess unless she's uh going that whole keeping it uh, throwing in the dash i don't know Catherine, what are you doing Anyway, cool. Hey, Catherine. How how uh-huh. are things in San Antonio? Oh. Yeah, what? Oh, no, Jeffrey just said, I guess Jeffrey's been watching this on, on Interbrews. Mm-hmm. He's been watching what? This, this show on Interbrews. On Interbrews? Yes, I discovered, I didn't tell you about this. What? I discovered a button that I could push uh-huh. that will also um, share this, put this show on, on Interbrews page. Yes. So it's on Interbrews. Yes. So good. People, that means I don't so, need to share it. So, so people are commenting. No, yeah. it's actually streaming live on the Interbrews page. Is it? So both pages? Yeah. Yeah. Or did it just share the Liquid Lunch page no. on Interbrews? No, I think it's actually live on Interbrews. Oh, hold on. Let me look at my so, own. So Jeffrey's been commenting on, on um, oh. Interbrews, and we've been ignoring him. Oh, sorry, Jeff. Sorry. Right. Sorry. I don't know, man. Uh, I, I tried to make it where they're connected. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay. Maybe we shouldn't do that anymore. Why? Because Catherine was commenting on, oh. on the Interbrews page. Julie was on the Interbrews page. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, Catherine got stuck behind a teenage scooter gang. Oh. Ah. <laughs> oh, and look, Jeffrey's talking about ESBs as well, too. Oh. Yeah. That's a great beer, that ESB. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. Look, um, we just need a way to keep up with all the chats. That's yeah. it. We just need like one. If we had another person, yeah. Just, where's if, if we, we had a guy. if we had, all I gotta say is about 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 that is this what could help us hard to come by, is it? Yeah, oh, it no is. Kidding. It is. Okay. How's your uh, how's your homebrew coming? We keep talking about it. Oh, the my um my West Coast IPA, the one that I'm gonna smoke, Jeffrey. And you're gonna do a smoked West Coast IPA? Well, I mean. I am um, Fire Kennedy. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Who said that? Jeffrey. Yeah. You fire me and see what happens to the show. Uh, actually, 
It would just there'd be less graphics. I could still do it though. It would just be me wow. and, my, and my phone. Yeah, yeah, it'd be you on your phone. Yeah, for now. But anyway, no, you're a valuable part of this team, Kennedy. We can't do it without you. And by we, I mean it wouldn't be we. It would just be me. So we can't do it without you. Uh, anyway. What were you saying? Okay, no, your West Coast IPA. You're smoked West Coast IPA? No, it's not smoked. I mean, I'm smoking as in I will be beating Jeffrey and Philip. Do you really, really, really? Oh, I, Jeffrey and I got money on this. Uh, that's, that's. We've, we've, we've got money. I'm. It's going well. It has been, uh, the yeast has been super happy. Mm-hmm, good. And I am uh, dry hopping tomorrow. Oh, uh, Jake was, uh, uh, he was, uh, fishing for crawfish. Sorry. I was totally listening. I'm looking at the chat. That's the thing about doing a live show. We need, yeah, we need, speaking of Jake's, we need, uh, Jake from State Farm back. I think he'll be back next week. Oh. He's on assignment. Oh, Jeffrey's offering to, uh, take my place. Oh, you want to drive out to Cypress or we'll, we'll no, find him. No, he's going to remote into your PC. Okay, cool. And run the show for you. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. That'll work. Good. Make uh, my life easier. Uh, Jules is in, uh, she said Clovis. Clovis, actually, look, listen, Clovis is right there on the border between Texas and, and New Mexico. It's the last, I yeah, think it's she, the first thing once you cross over to New Mexico. Yeah, she's, she, she started her new job and she was actually, she was in New Mexico. She's in Pan, Texas Panhandle, New Mexico, and then also in like West Texas. Are you, I thought she was going, she's not going to Santa Fe. I thought maybe she was, she had mentioned I, Santa Fe. I maybe. think she went to Santa Fe. I, I can't keep, her I'm list sorry. doesn't say Santa Fe. It says Clovis, Hobbs, Midland, Odessa. I wonder what the temperature is in Midland. I don't know. Y'all want to look and see what the temperature is? Let's take a guess. Right now, it's, I'm saying it's uh, 62 degrees in Midland. It's not fun now doing what's the temperature in Midland when it's not surface of the sun hot. No, but soon. Well, we got to get back into it. So what uh, What do you think the temperature is? In Midland right now? Yeah. Come on now. Uh, I said 62. 70. Oop. If we're going prices right rules. Yeah. I, I went over. You went over. But I'm 66 closer. degrees. Yeah. Uh, but sunny today. Beautiful day in Midland. Sunny all day long. Not a cloud in the sky. No chance of rain. Low of 40 overnight. Uh, Tomorrow, partly cloudy. High of 62. Saturday, Midland. Your Saturday mm -hmm. is looking fantastic. So you need to get out there. Uh, hey, Foamy had 13. He's having an El Camino from Real Air Brewing Company. Yeah. He's watching over there on the YouTubes. I can see the YouTube, uh, Twitter, and Twitch mm -hmm. chat over here. I bet Twitch is blowing up right now. It is. Yeah. I think there's nobody watching over there. Um, but we do need to do some like Twitch specific stuff. I want to go to uh, Battle Hops. Uh -huh. Do some Twitch stuff. What do you think? No. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. 66 degrees Midland right now. What else do we need to talk about? Have we run out of stuff to talk about? We haven't. Oh, hey, uh, Jose's back on. There we go. Hey, Jose. How's it going? Let me pull up Jose. Let's see what Jose's talking. Jose listening on our Mixler feed. Uh, he just got out of a uh, waterproofing lesson, which sounds... You were way over on your guest, by the way. He was like 85. Um, a waterproofing lesson? Hmm. Anyway. Hey, does anybody out there have the uh, coronavirus? Shout out to all our people with coronavirus. That's a target demo. <laughs> no one. Is that your computer making that sound? It might be. I think it is. That literally no one else can hear. Yeah. Hey, and then we just had a new subscriber there on the uh, YouTube. Thank you for that. Uh, what's boring is mowing the lawn. What we're talking about? Oh, the waterproofing lesson. <laughs> thanks. I'm glad that it's not us. I mean, we are, but thanks. Thanks for saying that. Well, you know, yeah. keeping dry is important. Is sure. I mean, it depends on the what, where, and how, right? Yes. Okay. There you go. Um. All right. Ooh. What else? We got other people chiming in. I'm gonna in. enjoy a cellus. Oh. Not chugging it. Okay. What did you think about? Let's talk about this. Uh, well, one. Let's. We have some beers in front of us, so let's discuss them first. The uh, Brooklyn uh, special effects. I don't know. We didn't really dig into this. We had Pam on. Uh, everybody, if you didn't get to see uh, Pam from. Uh, craftbeeraustin.com mm -hmm. uh, scroll back and check that out uh, after the show or do it now whenever it doesn't go, it's not going to bother me but uh, all the great things going on in Austin right now with mm -hmm. the pink boots and stuff but uh, anyway pre-show yeah. beer we had the uh, Brooklyn special effects which is their non-alcoholic beer I 
And I coined the term, you're not going to get lit, you, but you can get lit. Get it? Lent. Eh? Mm. So if you're like avoiding or giving up alcohol for Lent, special effects, he's right there. Pretty good. It's like a session IPA. What did you think? You know, I, be just, be just on principle, I wanted to hate it mm -hmm. because it's non-alcoholic. Right. And what's the point of drinking beer? But it was pretty good. It is pretty good. It's, it's got a good flavor. It's pretty tasty. Yeah. If I had and, not told told you it was, if I said don't look at the if I just poured it for you, would you have been able to tell it was a non alcoholic beer? I think I would have been able to tell. Why? How? It's just kind of missing something, and I can't really put my mouth around it. Yeah, that's. But it's it's missing something. Yeah, it um the body's a little different. I think that might be Jeffrey, all you brewer guys, uh -huh. somebody that knows Jeffrey. You're a mad scientist. Um, the non alcoholic uh, approach. How does that? I mean, it doesn't, I mean, it tastes a little different. It's not, definitely not hop water. It's, it's, to me, I'd put it in like that session IPA realm, which is basically like a brighter pale ale or something like that. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, whatever. That's where I would put it. But it's available now in the Houston area. I got this one at an HEB uh, in northern Houston or spring or whatever tomball wherever that was somewhere in that realm area realm <laughs> uh but anyway it's available so if you are giving up alcohol for lent uh brooklyn special effects is now available um athletic brewing pam mentioned they would be at south by southwest they do all non-alcoholic beers they have an ipa that's i think i i don't know that i'd have to do them side by side but i'd say brooklyn was probably a little tastier they also have a golden ale i don't know if that has like a Belgian yeast quality to it. But speaking of Belgian yeast, the Celis White that you're drinking, how would you rank that? Like ranking on, on like a scale one to ten? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> seven? That's it? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I mean. It's, it's about as. Uh, it's, if, if you like the wit. Yeah. That style wit beer is yeah. excellent. Well, it's the textbook version it of a wit Belgian excellent. wit. Excellent. Okay. Uh, almost as good as my wit. <laughs> Super humble. But uh, it's not really my favorite style. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you're. When what you, is your when favorite you, style? Do you have a favorite style? I don't. I just, it's, it's, it's different. If, if, yeah, if I was one style, I don't know. Yeah, if you had to pick a style. Yeah. That's it. To me, that's different. If I had one style to drink forever. If I had one style to drink forever, it'd probably be like a lager. Yes. Yeah. Right. That's I'm kind of in that same boat. But the thing I drink the most mm -hmm. probably ends up being IPAs. If we're but right. Yeah, when I go to a new brewery, um, I mean, unless they're known for something special, I usually go lager first mm -hmm. and then IPA. Okay. Uh, let's talk this mutton busting, okay? Now, you said the other day, I was talking to on a group chat with you and Jake from State Farm, and you busted in in your, were you, inebri were you inebriated at the point at that point? When? When you busted, when you tried to hijack that conversation. You do, you, everybody, Kennedy is a, is a uh, chat uh, hijacker. All right, so. Like having a conversation about a specific topic, and then he jumps in with something else. But I will say, I was like, save it for the show, because you said you hung out with, Bobby. Oh yeah. Do you remember it? Is this all coming back to you now? No. Yes. This is <laughs> this is that's your version of what happened. My version My is that version is Kennedy that don't hijack the conversation and is, now talk about it on the show. Is I was at our monthly Rogue Brewers meeting. Yeah. Shout out to all my fellow Rogue Brewers. Yeah. What up? And uh, my phone is just constantly buzzing in my pants. <laughs> And Bobby Harrell, did you just bring my mic up? I did. Yeah, because it just it just went w way up in my ears. Yeah, in my ear holes. Yeah. So Bobby Harrell was there, mm -hmm. and he was doing like this this roundtable discussion, and it was really interesting. Yes. Like over my head, most uh -huh. of it, but it was pretty interesting. And my phone's just buzzing, 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 buzzing. Yeah. And so then I jumped on and said that uh, I was listening to Bobby. Yeah. And it and, blew your mind. Yeah. But yeah, it, 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 it did blow my mind. It was after the fact, though. It was like, I, I want to say that you're, yeah. it was after. Yeah, and so I looked down and there were like 
15 text messages between you and Jake. Yes. We were talking business. Yeah. And you were all like, oh, Bobby's so smart. What did he say? I don't know. <laughs> he started talk. He went like really deep into, into yeast. And you don't recall any of it. Was it recorded anywhere? I don't know. I, I, somebody should record those meetings. But yeah, he went really deep into yeast, like to the cellular level. Did uh, was anybody else there? The, the the one thing I got out of that is yeast does not like to move more than three degrees a day. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. So that's all. That's what you <laughs> took from it. Yeah. See, Philip was at the same meeting, and his mind was blown too. Yeah. Well, what Bobby, Doctor Bobby. Yeah. Doctor Bob, Doctor Bobby, Doctor Doctor Bobby, mm -hmm. Doctor Bobby Harl. When he goes deep, he goes all the way. Um, but let's talk, speaking of uh, Bobby, let's talk about mutton busting. Dry mm -hmm. hopped wheat ale. Yeah. It, it does have a very kind of a fruity kind of thing going. There's a fruity element, like a springtime fruity kind of thing. Like I'm getting aroma of, um, what are the aromas I'm getting? I don't know. It's like, um, it says, yeah, melon hops. I'm getting melon aromas for sure. Bright citrus flavor without leaving. Yeah, it, it's definitely a, like it smells like spring, like a spring, springy day. I like huh. it. Jeffrey, you weren't there. You missed out big time. What do you think big about time. the mutton busting? Oh, that's, yeah, that's good. That's, that's a good. wheat beer. Yeah. Belgian wit. The white is a wheat beer. Mm -hmm. Two totally different beers. We chugged. Yeah. Um, no. So when we were at the meeting, uh -huh. I, uh, so I donated a keg of my of my latest homebrew. If anybody wants to try my latest homebrew, you go to the grain cellar right now. Oh, is it on tap? It's on tap at the grain cellar. It might not tap? be. It, it trust me, it was so good. It's probably they probably uh, bloated that keg by now. Yeah, but uh, it's on it's on tap at the grain cellar. What's, what's the, is it your it's, IPA? It's a stout. Oh, and I use Preston's uh, Cookie Monster Stout recipe. Okay, and uh, I remember looking over at Bobby. And he's under the tap. He's by the tap mm -hmm. with my cookie monster stout. Mm -hmm. He re he grabs a glass mm -hmm. and he starts pouring. Yeah, he does. There's four taps there. Yeah, there are. He chose mine first. He put his hand on it. He 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 poured the beer. What's the name of your stout? That's I just told you. The co it's a cookie monster no, that's stout. The name of the recipe. What's the name of your stout? I it, I followed that recipe. So well, that's not that's not. I didn't name it. You. I didn't name it. So there's a nameless, it, it's, it's, it's nameless it's, stout, it's, Jose. No, it's literally named on their Cookie Monster Stout. Yeah, but that's not your So name. I look over. He looks at all four taps. He chooses mine first. Mm -hmm. He puts the glass under. Yeah, he does. And he pours it. Mm. It, was a little, it was a little undercarbonated. Yeah, it was. So the head wasn't like no. I like it. But he, he starts drinking it. Mm, puts it in his and mouth. you know what? What? He didn't, he didn't spit. Yeah. He drank it. Yeah, he did. Then what did he say? He didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Did he have any more? Uh, I don't know. I, he he tried all of them eventually, and so I. Jose said he made Cookie Monster Stout as uh -huh. well. Yeah. He named his though. What? Oh, what do you name it? Waiting. I don't know. I don't know. What'd you name it, Jose? So I'm talking to Bobby, and so I'm asking him what he thought about it, and as I'm talk, as I asked him that, I don't know if this was on purpose or what happened, but the conversation ended up turning to something else. Dr. Bobby Harrell doesn't do anything yeah. accidentally. Yeah. So he didn't really come out and give me any kind of critique. Yeah. We, ended up, we ended up talking about this and that, started talking about the show a lot. And then we ended up talking about uh, how you get yeast cultures to do, to make a vagina beer. Mm. Yeast cultures from the vagina and to, to make the beer. Apparently where? it's really simple to do, but... You just I have to know. have I a don't vagina. Know. I don't know. What do you do? Swab it? Uh, Does it matter where you swab it? I I mean, I, I don't know how to answer that. Is there a particular region of of the the spot? Yeah, where the region in which you swab uh -huh. to get to get more yeast cultures. Oh, like where exactly is the most yeast? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a woman. No, I, I imagine the deeper you go, the more. Yeast cultures. See, are? I think that's no. That's a that's a man's way of approach. I, yeah, probably. I, I don't want know. the scientific approach. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It's not all about just going to the deepest part. You know. Yeah. Thank you, Jose. Mm -hmm. Remember that is a work computer you're typing on there. Can't say what Jose just said. Yeah, you can. No, you can't. Can't do it. 
No. All right. Well, that's good. I'm glad he didn't spit it out. No, he was. He drank it. And he. I don't know. He didn't make a face when he drank it. Yeah. I mean, I looked, but he drank it. Mm -hmm. Three ounce pours. That's all you're allowed to do at the homebrew club meeting. Mm. We're not allowed to get drunk there. Three ounce pours. Drink anything more than a three ounce pour. You got to go. You have to go. You, no, you, you, don't, you, you don't have to go. But call an Uber. Yeah. You know what else we need to call? You but, do. No, we're Uber. we're we're tasting beers there. Mm -hmm. We're not drinking beers to get drunk. Yeah, it's so, an artistic so, approach, right? So three hour, three ounce pours. There's mm -hmm. a lot of there's a lot of different varieties of beer. Yeah. All right. And you know, a lot of people don't bring a whole lot. One or two bottles. Oh, so you're saying there's freeloaders? No, I'm not saying there's freeloaders. People that don't pay their fair share. No, I donated a keg. There you go. And but over how long? How long have you been going? To the meetings? Yeah. How many years? Over a year? Huh? <laughs> Jeffrey says the three ounce is a rule made for me, not everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're afraid you're going to take all the beer. Not that you're known for that, but you're kind of known for that. I'm not known for that. Stealing beers? It's kind of I've your never thing. stole beer from the grain cellar. Hmm. Okay. Why, why, you don't need to steal beer there. It's true. They now have... There's now two keezers, four taps each. Yeah. Help yourself. Speak I, I, I personally recommend the Cookie Monster Stout. Yeah. If you go Speaking there. of keezers, did you notice I've done a little work on mine? No. Good, because it's, it's just very preliminary stuff. I've got to put some more trim work on it. But it's well, all... I mean, I don't understand why you're even bothering with that thing. Listen, I I mean, to, to have a keezer uh -huh. requires kegs. I got two of them over there. You got two kegs mm -hmm. in there? Yeah. Well, one's behind it and one's in it. So you have a keg behind it? Yes, that doesn't an have an empty keg. Yet. Yes, it's an empty keg. It's a potential potential keg. What are you gonna how are you gonna fill that keg? I'm going to brew some beer or make something. <laughs> when I feel like it on my own terms, you <laughs> fool. Don't don't bring your beginner level thing over here, son. Beginner. I'm, I'm easily up to lower intermediate by now. <laughs> No, you're not. I don't know. It depends on where you draw the line. You need to read some books, though, for sure. No. Really? Look, don't take any of my books, but there's a library right over here of books for you to look at and then go purchase on your own. And they're all available on uh, ebooks, most of them anyway. Oh. Start with the Palmer, but maybe do the Charlie P book, too, as well. You need it. You need to get that info in your brain. So apparently Jeffrey went to the Grand Cellar on Saturday, and we, mm -hmm. left, we left it in a big mess. Yeah. I left early. Well. I... Bobby was still talking when I left. I think he may have been wrapping it up. But uh, it, was, it would have been rude of me to start cleaning up while everyone was still there. So yeah, it's not my fault. Did you, when you were there on Saturday, did you have, try the Cookie Monster Stout on tap, Jeffrey? Are you waiting for him to answer? On, on his own terms. <laughs> it just went really silent. It was when, really when, awkward. When, there, whenever, so. you're, whenever you're ready. Okay. Cool. When you, when you can get around to it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that music you hear faintly in the background means it's time for to us to end the show. Because no. look, because mm. your lunch break doesn't last all day. Sorry. It's not my rule. It's your boss. So if your boss is saying get back to work, mm -hmm. then, you know, blame him or her mm -hmm. or whomever. Yep. You know? Yep. What a, anyway. But uh, fantastic show today, if, uh, if I don't say so myself. Not yes. because of my involvement, but because of... Uh, my involvement. Pam's oh. involvement. Yeah, of course you didn't mean me. Pam Cato mm -hmm. from uh, Jose Still Eating. That's fine, mm -hmm. sir. As long as you keep all the water contained, it's all good. But mm -hmm. uh, thank you to uh, Pam Cato from uh, craftbeeraustin.com. Yeah, we were debating on how, how to say her last name. Is it Cato or Cato? I've been saying Cato. It's Cato. Okay. Cato. There we go. Yep. But uh, we she'll, go. she'll be back on, uh, hopefully regularly, yeah. to talk Austin. And all the wonderful things going on in our uh, state capital there. And mm -hmm. all the great beers being brewed. And we're not talking legislature. Unless it's beer related. Yeah. But then it's only, it's bi, uh, bi, biannual. Is biannual mean every two years? Twice a year. So what's for every two years? Every two years. There's a word for it though. Uh, bi something. Centennial. No, that's 200 years. Sickle. Bicycle? Okay, we'll go with it. Bicyclical. Anyway, uh, but there will be beer law changes and stuff, and that's a, always a good uh, place to go because that's where they do that. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, good show today, Kennedy. Yep. Uh, do annual. 
Okay, there you go. Thank you, Jose. Uh, thank you to everybody who watched today. Jules, have uh, safe travels back. Jeffrey, um, dig into uh, making non-alcoholic beers. Uh, I want to know more, and I need your mad science uh, mm -hmm. advice on all of that. Right. Um, Jeffrey, huh. um, after our March meeting, when we have the West Coast IPA, and uh, mine blows your ears away, I'll be happy to give you some advice. There you go. Anyway, um, there you go. What else we got? We're going to be back next week. Mm -hmm. What are we doing next week? Oh, yeah, next week. Everyone needs to tune in. We'll be speaking with um, Community Beer Company, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't there a Community Beer Company? Is in, that? in Dallas, Texas. Is that? Award sure. GABF mm -hmm. Gold Winning yeah. Texas Lager. Yes. Corey will be on. Corey. Thank you. So, way to bring that one home. Everybody, make sure you tune in next week. Yeah. We're going to have a great show, even if it is Dallas. That's just good fun. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening, watching, viewing, sharing, and being a part. And go buy somebody a beer this week and have a great time. And uh, Pam, thank you. Kennedy, good job. I'm Josh. We'll see you next week right here. Liquid Lunch. Bye, everybody. All right.